Welcome to the Unfinished Swan panel. So I'm guessing uh, that we have fans in here of indie games and small creative titles. Maybe we, first we should uh, check out the uh, the video that you guys brought. Uh, yeah, so the video, if, uh, if anyone hasn't seen The Unfinished Swan, this is uh, the first bit of it. So the game is a first-person painting game, and it starts off in a completely white world, and the player is throwing these paintballs to sort of figure out what's around them. And our, our goal of the game was to create uh, a sense of wonder for players. So we tried to make a space that players felt like they were actually exploring. And one of the ways we did that was by not telling them anything at all about the game. So it starts off completely white, and there's no instructions at all. Uh, you just have a white screen, and a lot of players will spend you know, like five seconds. Up to, uh, we've seen two minutes in a playtest where someone is just waiting for the game to tell them what to do. But it and will then, never. It will never tell you what to do. Yeah, and, and then eventually players get frustrated and start pressing buttons and start throwing these paintballs. And that's pretty much what we're going for throughout the entire game. Uh, we want it to be something that you know, feels like the players, again, are like actively exploring. And when they discover something, it's you know, something they didn't expect to see, uh, like this frog here, that the world goes from being you know, completely white and, and static to suddenly there are you know, at least one thing, two things that, that are alive in this world. Mm -hmm. um, and then another important thing is that um, the discovery of the first mechanic is like um, definitely on tone with the whole game, because we later have more mechanics that you learn in a similar way where we don't tell you anything and you kind of just start interacting with them. So we'll be sharing a little bit more about that later. So when we approached to the, getting the, uh, the shape and the um, style, and I started doing some concepts. This was the very first uh, concept that I did. A very white, just white background with some, some of the, you know, um, painterly uh, background. With, as you can see, some stairs too kind of pops a little bit. And this was like the very early uh, stage, the concept. Uh, well, this is not the concept. This is actually the 3D render. And I did some um, um, the paint over it, trying to get some uh, um, um, style, which one would work. And I started working on some shapes, buildings and stairs and balconies, and started to just put it together. And then some more buildings, boxes. Now, is this something, this is like a level that people are going to be able to go through? Or is this, you know, uh, for the artists, like when, for the level designers, for example, when they're kind of trying to plan out what's going on? Yes, we have a, a not particularly the same, but very similar, very similar uh, a stage that has this very similar uh, um, this background. One of the reasons that we brought Hokio in, actually, uh, you know, we had interviewed, I don't know, half a dozen or a dozen art directors, and uh, Hokio just had a really nice hand-drawn style that we felt like was a really good match for what we were trying to go for in the game. So we, one of the big inspirations for us was Shel Silverstein, and that kind of like hand-drawn, a little bit sloppy, but really like intimate feel that turns out to be really, really difficult to do in 3D, because everything just naturally feels too sharp and hard and, and kind of unhand drawn like it, too, it feels very manufactured. So on the design side, that was something that we were constantly looking for ways to take Hokio's concept art and actually put it in the game. Uh, so we have like our, uh, the cutscenes in the game are all hand drawn. So you see like lines that, that come out and, and draw things that was a way for us to inject a little bit more of a, a hand drawn feel back into the game. Mm -hmm. So. After that uh, um, concepts, and uh, we made a like a quick little you know box level, and uh, then I thought I think that it was too bold, too too contrasty, kind of to wanted to make it a little bit soft. And I have a child a boy, and I, I go to uh, the pottery barn or you know the <laughs> kids furniture store, and I I was just looking at this. Uh, the boy bedroom set was like, you know, sky blue with white. I thought it worked just was so, made me feel so comfortable. So I took the idea and applied it to the, uh, our concept. And 
this actually is the same shot, but with the, with the color, the blue. Now we have a blue. So now that there's the color in there, like how does the color appear to the gamer? I mean, does it, is it sort of already there, or is it something that is also revealed? Yeah, in this area of the world, everything has already been revealed for you. So, you know, we found that with the, the splatting paint mechanic, it was something that was very intense for players that worked better in short bursts. So there's still some, like, all white areas in this area of the world, but for the most part, players are now, you know, able to look around and, and sort of appreciate their surroundings. So now we're going to see the, the result. This is what you see in the game right now. This is actual the game uh, in-game shots. As you can see, there's uh, vines too. I was trying to making it very uh, soft, and I love the the, the how do you say it? the dual tone? Sure. Yeah, very muted, kind of unsaturated feel. It makes your eye like uh, it's like it's like a like really nice uh, cake. <laughs> <laughs> very soft. Why is the game called Unfinished Swan? Uh, because in the game, the player is a young boy who is chasing after a swan that has stepped out of an unfinished painting. So uh, there's you know the swan that is frequently running ahead of you and provides you know some context and, and a goal for the player. Well, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to have you ask your question. Introduce yourself first. Hi, uh, my name's Nick, and I, first I just want to say that this looks <laughs> awesome. I just want to say it looks really, really good. I'm just wondering how how this came from not even being an idea that existed to the team that you've created right now. <laughs> and I want to hear a little bit from our friend on the end, our quiet friend on the end, about. <laughs> hey, uh, so for uh, specifics, actually, uh, Giant Sparrow as a company started out with Ian and uh, an artist that he was working with who contacted him through the internet, uh, Flavian Courbier, who is actually a wonderful guy. Uh, I wish he could be here uh, to talk a little bit about. If this. he's watching, we love you, Flavian. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we do. He's a good guy. <laughs> but but Hokio had to basically throw away a lot of his visual style and, and rebuild the game uh, from the ground up. Uh, so it was kind of an abrupt shift. Um, but so it just started as Ian and Ho uh, sorry Ian and Flavian, and now we're 12 people, which is crazy to me because uh, we thought we were going to be able to make this game with four or five people tops, <laughs> and in like 18 months, which is also crazy. <laughs> and so, what are your offices like? Are they? Is everyone kind of? Is it a big open space or? We are. Uh, uh, incubated in Sony Santa Monica, uh, so we're actually at the opposite end of the building from where God of War is made, behind the kitchen, uh, but there are a lot of windows. In so the it's, corner. It's, it's actually a very nice space. <laughs> They're very nice people, yes. Um, hi, my name is Garrison, and I was wondering, when it comes to video games as an art form, mm -hmm. we're we in this time where we see games like Journey, games like Unfinished Swan, and Okami that's coming out soon. Do you see this going in the direction even more so as video games as an art form or staying where it is? We're engaging with actual art in terms of painting, just like Okami is like very illustrated. Um, but in terms of like games as an art form themselves, I think we're definitely asking a lot of questions that other games aren't. And so we're saying, like in this game, we're not telling you how to do anything, and we're trusting you. And it's a game about exploration, and we don't have like puzzles per se, it's all about navigating architecture and what architecture means to different characters. And so I think it's a story that's going to make you think in different ways than other games. And that's definitely the direction of these art games that are coming out. And in terms of whether or not we're going to see more of these games or, or, or fewer, I think that's really a question for players. So if players are interested and they support that, then you know companies like Sony are going to be willing to take a gamble on that. And it's just amazing that Sony would trust people that had never made a game before to spend three years and you know a lot of people's time and energy on making something like this. And the reason that they do that is you know partly because of games like you know Journey and, and Flower that they've said like okay. Because everyone wants to make cool, interesting, weird games, but you know it's not free to do that. And so yeah, if, if people are interested and if you know there are platforms that are hospitable, hospitable to it, then yeah, there, there will definitely be be more. So a little more directly, please buy the game, and uh, <laughs> it's 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 incredibly flattering, uh, and it's a it's a great honor to be mentioned in the same sentence as games like Journey. Um, I think at the end of the day, what we're trying to do with this game is create a sense of awe and wonder in players, uh, and if we achieve that, I think we've succeeded. And then if uh, somebody looks back on this game and says, "Hey, I I think they pushed the medium forward. I think they you know helped the game stand up as art." 
then all the better. That's, uh, but you know, players and player experience, that's number one for us. All right, guys, I'm sure you'll be hearing more about this game, and I can't wait to check it out. Thank you so much for our panelists. Thank you guys so much for coming here and checking out some of this awesome art. Thank you.